Okay, now, story in Enslaved Odyssey to the West. I'll just say right here, before I even explain the story, I love the living hell out of the story. I thought everything in this story was fantastic. And that's saying a lot, seeing that this year was pretty much the uh, year of stories and video games, because we had Alan Week, we had Heavy Rain, we had Red Dead Redemption, we had all these other great games, I can't think of, all these other great stories and games. And... It's a lot to say that this is actually one of the best ones of this year, because I really think so. I love the characters in this game. I love just the story itself, where it's set. It's fantastically told. I just love it. Now, let me explain the story of this game. Okay, now, the story in Enslaved pretty much is set 150 years into the future. And pretty much what happened in that 150 years is... I would say a nuclear war. Everything's destroyed, there's buildings destroyed, there's barely any humans left, and the humans that are left are actually getting enslaved by uh, these mechs for some reason, these combat mechs, and they, they've been programmed forever to know how to kill and capture, that's all. Like, the ones that don't fight back, they capture. The ones that they, uh, that do, they kill. So, pretty much that. And you play as Monkey, who has just been captured, I mean, captured, and he pretty much gets out somehow and later on meets uh, a girl named Trip who, while he's unconscious from escaping, he gets enslaved by her. She get, he get, she puts a thing on his head so she can control him. And the reason why she did that is so that she can use him to get back to her home because she's afraid that they're going to get enslaved and she also just wants to get home. So... Pretty much that's m the main story for the first half, but later on it becomes something completely different. I don't want to spoil it, but if you played the game, you know what it is, and if you read about it, then you probably already know. So I don't want to explain it, because it might be a spoiler, so there. There's the story. I really love it, like I said before, and yeah, let's go into the sound of the game. Okay, now the sound in Enslaved, just like the story, is fantastic. I loved the sound in this game. Now, the voice acting itself would definitely just make this a great sounding game, but also you have the sound effects, which are great, all the environmental effects, which are pretty much the same, but everything else is fantastic with the sound. Now, let me just talk about the voice acting. The voice acting is phenomenal. Andy Serkis plays Monkey, and he does a great job. He makes this character what he is. He has the perfect voice for Monkey, and I mean, I just love him. I loved him as Monkey. He does a great job, he does good with dialogue, and just, he does the mocap, and he also co-directs this. And, I gotta say, great job. I mean, I haven't seen him in many films. I saw him, he like did a voice for a character in Flushed Away once, and that was it, if you ever remembered that movie. And that's really all I saw him in. He was also in King Kong, and he also played the King Kong himself. But he was also in the movie, like, he played a character, so... That was cool. So he, this is a cool way to see his acting chops, and he does a great freaking job. He's a great mocap, he's a great co-director, and I gotta say, he's a great voice actor, so keep on doing it. <laughs> yeah, mother... No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, yeah, the sound effects and I mean, just the sound overall is fantastic. So let's go on to the graphics of the game. Okay, now the graphics in Enslaved... I'm just going to sound like a broken record. I think the graphics are fantastic. Now, I don't think it's as good as the story and the sound, mostly because, I mean, I still love that. I thought it looked fantastic. But there were some graphical glitches and some textures that didn't really clear up real good. Like, they would look very muddy uh, until, like, ten seconds later after they loaded. And that was kind of crappy. But everything else, the environments, the mechs themselves, the character models are fantastic. Everything else, the environments look great, the water, just like, you see a lot of water in this game, and the water looks great, and just how much this game can take, like, I mean, the environments are huge, like, you, you see right here, you're going across a whole city, now you can't go around the city, but it looks like you could definitely go on there, on the bottom, and just, like, explore it, right, you can't, because... It's not an open world game, but it's just expansive. Sure, it's linear, but it looks expansive, and it looks great. I'll just say it right here. I love the graphics in this game. There's a couple of graphical glitches, like some texture pops up and all that. But, I mean, no game is perfect. But still, this game's graphics are, is fantastic. So let's go on to the gameplay of Enslaved. Okay, now the gameplay in Enslaved overall... Probably the weakest part of the game, but that's not saying much at all, because I still really enjoyed the gameplay. Now, saying it's the weakest part kind of makes it sound bad, 
But really, it's not. I'll, t- I'll just tell you my two main concerns with the gameplay. The camera angles are a little weird sometimes. Sometimes it gets way too close to Monkey, and you can't see what's going on. And also, the controls sometimes for a Monkey is a little flaky. You know, It's kind of like how Dead Rising 2's controls were. It's just a little weird. And that was a game that just recently came out, so that's why I... <laughs> Uh, referenced it. So yeah, they're, they're a little flaky, but overall you'll get used to them. I mean, if you don't, then you're just, I guess you're not good at the game, sorry. I mean, I'm great at it, so eh. So yeah, overall, the the two main concerns aren't even that bad. Everything else is great. The combat is really, really fun. You get uh, Monkey's uh, bow, I mean, not bow, uh, staff, and it's great. The platforming is so smooth. Maybe not the greatest, but very, very smooth. Uh... The stealth parts, like, there's some stealth parts, not really stealth, because you can just get up and run to the enemy, but if you do, you'll probably get shot, so sometimes you have to go and get your, uh, friend trip, uh, to distract the enemies while you go and pretty much take them out, so it's pretty much stealth. You get a few puzzles in the game, not many, not really a big thing here, it's mostly, like, pull a lever, and then a crane would come up, and you have to get on the crane and pull this level, a lever, and... Overall, I thought it was actually really well done. I mean, some of the puzzles were challenging, but most of them are like the cliched kind of thing, like I said before, pull, pulling levers. And overall, I thought the puzzles were still pretty good, even though they were cliched. I mean, they were tough. They were cliched, though, because it was lever pulling, so whatever. And, yeah, just overall, I thought the gameplay was phenomenal, just like everything else. I mean, it wasn't as good as everything else, but it was still really, really great. And... I love this game. I'm just going to say right here, this is probably one of my favorite games of this year. All the critics are giving it an 8. Game Informer gave it a 7. I don't understand. I love the game. There's nothing wrong with it besides those two things and some graphical glitches. I really loved it. So expect this to be a high 9 or something. Whatever. If you have a, you know, if you're like, oh, you're stupid for loving it, then whatever. I love the game. I would really like to see a sequel whenever. And, yeah, just take your time with it, Ninja Theory. I mean, I think you took your time with this game, so take your time with the sequel. I love it. That's my review. Check the description for a written review, and definitely go try this game. At least rent it. So, yeah, thank you, and goodbye.